all over in Budapest. And of course, the only champions it could be, it always is. That's right. And the only winning kicker it could be, Gonzalo Montiel scored the winning penalty in the World Cup final. Has just done the same a couple of Two months goes later. Two goes at it here, didn't he? Yeah, he, he took the first one. It was saved by Rui Patricio to his left, but he'd come off his line. Now, Sevilla benefited all those years ago in the Europa League from Beto coming quite a long way off his line to save a couple of those penalties in a crucial shootout with Juventus. This time, we've got VAR keeping a very close eye on it. He got to take it again, put it in the other corner, 4-1 on penalties to Sevilla. 7 UEFA Cup slash Europa League finals out of seven. It's extraordinary. Well, what is the secret? Because put this team into comparison, the club into comparison with, say, an English team, what level would you, would you place them at? Well, in terms of finance, no one in the Premier League. They don't have the money of anyone in the Premier League. It's, it's extraordinary. You know, they really base their success on wheeler dealing. It's been Monchi, the former sporting director of, of, of Roma, who's come back for a second spell at Sevilla. His recruitment has been poor in the last year and a half, two years. They came really close um, to winning La Liga last season. The bottom's fallen out of it with that bad recruitment this season. Um, Jose Luis Mendilibar, the, the coach, has done a brilliant job, their third coach of the season, to steer them away from the bottom. A relegation specialist, a relegation avoidance specialist, and he's taken them all the way in this competition. I mean, there is the sense that certainly at home, those fans feel it. Some of those players feel it. Jesus Navas, he's been there before. Lucas Acampos, he's been there before. And we're just looking at Paulo Dybala, who looked like his contribution was going to be vital. Of course, he hadn't played properly for weeks. Scored the goal in the first half that put Roma in front. Roma couldn't hold on to it. He's crying his heart out. Now, his future's uncertain. Yeah. Mourinho's future well, is uncertain. Look, let's consider the Roma fans, because Sevilla fans will be partying in Budapest and back in Spain, but this is the Stadio Olimpico and a very subdued. Where does this leave Roma? Where does it leave Mourinho? Because this was the sort of get-out-of-jail card as well to get into the Champions League next Yeah, uh, they're not going to make it into the, 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 the top four now. Uh, they might even end up in the, the Conference League, depending how they do on the final day of the season against Spezia and how the other results go. It's really tough to see Mourinho carrying on under these sort of circumstances. You know, they've been suffering from FFP sanctions for a, a long time. Um, they're still trying to move stadium. Roma don't have a lot of money to, to, to play with. And I don't really see how Mourinho can really progress the team from here. And Dybala has got a get-out clause in his contract. Now, whether anyone wants to bite on that with the fitness problems he has, that's a different question. They'll have to renegotiate, but there's not a lot of money in the pot to do that. And can anyone beat Sevilla in the Europa League next season? No, <laughs> Whoever's right. there. Well, well that will be an after-Christmas business because, of course, this gets you qualification to the Champions League. I mean, they might kick themselves if they get through in second place in the group. They, they, they love this competition. Yeah, remarkable story, isn't it? 11th in, in La Liga and then, uh, and then uh, fighting relegation, but now win the Europa League again for a seventh time. Andy Brassel, thank you very much for tonight. It's been a long night, but a pleasure to get your insight and your, you. uh, your commentary throughout. Thank you.